Today's nap time story time is also found in a rescued anthology. We're going to start with this unit, meeting challenges. We're going to hear on page 242, if I were president, and then we'll hear the story, Uncle Jed's Barbershop. Since we're in the middle of a big challenge none of us has ever faced before, I thought this would be a good unit. And since we see a lot of the President of the United States on TV, a lot, <laughs> I figured this might be a good poem. Let's see. If I were President. If I were President, the tanks would be playhouses for the kids. Boxes of candy would fall from the sky. The mortars would fire balloons and the guns would blossom with flowers. All the world's children would sleep in a peace unbroken by alerts or by shooting. The refugees would return to their villages and we would start anew. That poem was written by Roberto, age 10, from Pula, Croatia. And this lovely painting was done by Maja, age 12, from Porzenga, Croatia. Here is the author and the illustrator for this story we will hear, Uncle Jed's Barbershop. Let's see. Marguerite King Mitchell was able to practice her writing and help her grandfather at the same time when she was young. In those days, very few people owned televisions. Most people listened to the radio to get news. When her grandfather was too busy to listen to the news on the radio, she would listen and write down the news that she heard. Then, while her grandfather ate supper, Mitchell would read her news stories to him. Award-winning illustrator James E. Ransom. When James E. Ransom illustrates a book, he tries to show that all people have different, wonderful qualities that make them special. Like Uncle Jed in the story that you are about to read, Ransom's father recently opened his own barbershop. He has worked as a barber for 25 years. This is an award-winning book, Uncle Jed's Barbershop. Jedediah Johnson was granddaddy's brother. Everybody has their favorite relative. Well, Uncle Jedediah was mine. He used to come by our house every Wednesday night with his clippers. He was the only black barber in the county. Daddy said that before Uncle Jed started cutting hair, he and granddaddy used to have to go 30 miles to get a haircut. After Uncle Jed cut my daddy's hair, he lathered a short brush with soap and spread it over my daddy's face and shaved him. Then he started over on my granddaddy. I always asked Uncle Jed to cut my hair, but Mama wouldn't let him. So he would run the clippers on the back of my neck and just pretend to cut my hair. He even spread lotion on my neck I would smell wonderful all day. When he was done, he would pick me up and sit me in his lap and tell me about the barber shop he was going to open one day and about all the fancy equipment that would be in it. The sinks would be so shiny, they sparkled. The floor was so clean, you could see yourself. He was going to have four barber chairs 
and outside was going to be a big, tall, red and white barber pole. He told me he was saving up for it. He had been saving a, he had been saying the same thing for years. Nobody believed him. People didn't have dreams like that in those days. We lived in the South. Most people were poor. My daddy owned a few acres of land and so did a few others. But most people were sharecroppers. That meant they lived in a shack and they worked for somebody else's and they worked somebody else's land in exchange for a share of the crop. When I was five years old, I got sick. This particular morning, I didn't come into the kitchen while mama was fixing breakfast. Mama and daddy couldn't wake me up. My nightgown and bedclothes were all wet where I had sweated. Mama wrapped me in a blanket while Daddy went outside and hitched our horse to the wagon. We had to travel about 20 miles into town to the hospital. It was midday when we got there. We had to go to the colored waiting room. In those days, they kept blacks and whites separate. There were separate public restrooms, separate water fountains, separate schools. It was called segregation. So in the hospital, we had to go to the colored waiting room. Even though I was unconscious, the doctors wouldn't look at me until they had finished with all the white patients. When the doctors did examine me, they told my daddy that I needed an operation and that it would cost $300. $300 was a lot of money in those days. My daddy didn't have that kind of money and the doctors wouldn't do the operation until they had the money. My mama bundled me back up in the blanket and they took me home. Mama held me in her arms all night. She kept me alive until daddy found Uncle Jed. He found him early the next morning in the next county on his way to cut somebody's hair. Daddy told him all about me. Uncle Jed leaned on his bent cane and stared straight ahead. He told daddy that the money didn't matter. He couldn't let anything happen to his Sarah Jean. Well, I had the operation. For a long time after that, Uncle Jed came by the house every day to see how I was doing. I know that $300 delayed from him from opening the barbershop. Uncle Jay came awfully close to opening his shop a few years after my operation. He had saved enough money to buy the land and build the building, but he still needed money for the equipment. Anyway, Uncle Jed had come by the house we had just finished supper when there was a knock at the door. It was Mr. Ernest Walters, a friend of Uncle Jed's. He had come to tell Uncle Jed about the bank failing. That was where Mr. Walters and Uncle Jed had their money. Uncle Jed had over $3,000 in the bank and it was gone. 
Uncle Jed just stood there a long time before he said anything. Then he told Mr. Walters that even though he was disappointed, he would just have to start all over again. Talk about some hard times. That was the beginning of the Great Depression. Nobody had much money. But Uncle Jed kept going around to his customers, cutting their hair, even though they couldn't pay him. His customers shared with him whatever they had. A hot meal, fresh eggs, vegetables from the garden, and when they were able to pay again, they did. And Uncle Jed started saving all over again. Old Uncle Jed finally got his barbershop. He opened it on his 79th birthday. It had everything just like he said it would. Big comfortable chairs, four cutting stations, you name it. The floors were so clean they sparkled. On opening day, people came from all over the county. They were all Uncle Jed's customers. They walked to see they he had walked to see them for so many years. That day they all came to see him. I believe he cut here all night. And all the next day, and the next day, and the next night, and the next night after that. That man was so glad to have that shop, he didn't need any sleep. Of course, I was there too. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. When I sat in one of those big barber chairs, Uncle Jed patted the back of my neck with lotion like he always did. Then he twirled me round and round in the barber chair. Uncle Jed died not long after that, and I think he died a happy man. You see, he made his dream come true, even when no one else believed in it. He taught me to dream too. Now, let's look at these response questions. In response, the perfect barbershop. Draw a picture of Uncle Jed's barbershop. Reread the descriptions in the story and illustrate the perfect barbershop for Uncle Jed. You might want to show the inside, the outside, or the street it's on. Don't give up. Imagine that you are Uncle Jed. Write a short speech telling people not to give up their dreams. Practice your speech a few times, then say it for your family. Grand opening today. With a partner or by yourself, plan the grand opening celebration for Uncle Jed's Barbershop. Decide whom to invite and who will give speeches. What kind of decorations should there be? Don't forget that it's Uncle Jed's birthday. I like that story. Now, if you were here last week, you remember that we read a story about Pinocchio. And Pinocchio didn't always do the right thing. Didn't always tell the truth. And then I had a moment where over here by the door where the recyclables are waiting to go downstairs, I had knocked this on the floor and it had broken in several pieces. And I asked you, what did you think Pinocchio would do? Well, I hope Pinocchio wouldn't have done what I did. I acknowledged what happened and I tried to fix it as best I could. And it's also a lesson about friendship. It tells us that friends are not always perfect. We all can have some cracks, but we can make it work. Now, with all that said, 
You know what I always tell you at the end of this story? Go take your nap.